Clemson. Uh, this is a team that made probably the biggest coordinator hire of this offseason, at least the most well-known, right? I mean, sure, defensively, you lose Miles Murphy, Brian Brissy. Okay, that's really tough. But offensively, get Garrett Riley in there at offensive coordinator, and all of a sudden, people are really loving the idea of Cade Klubnick and Will Shipley playing with Garrett Riley. So if you look at their offensive stats, their offensive stats actually are better than on the sheet than they really were, right? If you watched Clemson play offensively, you know that they struggled to pass the ball at times. They never had struggle running the ball. Will Shipley was unbelievable. In fact, CD drafted him in our running back uh, draft a few weeks back. Defensively, they were fantastic. Their run defense was insane, but part of that was due to Miles Murphy and Brian Brissy. So their over under win total right now is 10. It's 10 right now. Um, Again, also, too, you look at these losses. Um, Clemson is not a team that dives into the transfer portal very much to go get talent, right? I mean, that was all about uh, – it's all about loyalty, right? The only guy that they got was uh, Paul Tyson, who's Bear Bryant's grandson. So, And that, that's like a GA hire. That's like – yeah, that doesn't mean – that's like Hunter Johnson last year. I mean, that guy's never going to play in – yeah, it's a I mean, thing. and Dabo's an Alabama guy, so he he probably respects a uh, little, little Paul Tyson there. So I don't know what over under 10 wins. What are you feeling right now? To be honest, I Garrett Riley makes me excited. Okay. I know, yes, they lost some guys defensively Murphy, Brissy, McFadden, Henry, Trenton Simpson, right? All those guys. But I, they still have talent. This is Clemson. They've recruited really, really well. The linebacker core is still really great. Jeremiah Trotter and Barrett Carter are elite. And then Wade Woodhead is also a great linebacker in the, the 4-3 defense when they go base. DBs, they always have good DBs there, and everyone's back, right? Uh, D-line will be tough, but I think they got that stud, Peter Woods uh, from Alabama, a true freshman that's going to play and play early real well for him. It's going to be up to the receivers, again, like it's been the past couple of years. Can they have separation? Can they create explosive plays? Expectations are absolutely higher, but you still have to sh- you still have to prove it to me. Uh, we'll see about the O line. Uh, they're trying to uh, to to move some things around. It's still not settled yet. Who's going to be the left tackle, which is obviously a key position. Um, and then Cade Klubnik, Cade Klubnik. I know people are high on him. Was highly recruited, but yeah, he's only a sophomore and he didn't play all last year either. Uh, he only got some time in at the end. So, so we'll see. I, I, I think the over 10 is actually a great line. I'm not going to bet it. I, I would lean towards the over just because I think the upside there, I, I don't, I see 11 and one versus nine and three way more often, but I think I'm, they're going to end up pushing at 10 and two just because they get Notre Dame middle of the year. You got to play UNC, you got to play Miami FSU you know, at North Carolina state at South Carolina who beat them last year. Um, yeah, I, 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 to me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold off on this one. I, I lean under. I do. I lean under. Which e- even with Garrett Riley, even with Garrett Riley, I, I, I think Garrett Riley. Okay, I, 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 it's easy to say, Garrett Riley made those players, right, what they were. Right. He took he took a bunch of Jamokes at TCU and made him great. Right. Both those players, they were good players. They had really good talent on that team. They had a great offensive line. They had a fantastic running back. They had two great receivers. Um, and a quarterback who just figured out how to win things, they figured out how to get things done. This offense does it is not as good as that TCU offense. It's not. Um, I which do is think Will crazy. Shipley's, yeah, which is crazy. Which Will in Shipley's like year re- ten with Dabo Sweeney, year fifteen with Dabo Sweeney is, it's a worse offense than year one, um, with TCU last year. Yeah, and and here's the thing, I, the losses on defense are gigantic. I think I think Murphy, Brice, KJ, Andrew. I think the aggregate of those losses is so big that like they were so good against the run last year, right? They were so good against the run. It made teams like if you got up in Clemson, right? It was hard. It was hard to put them away, right? They were always in that game, right? And then you're forcing to throw the ball on them, which also is hard to do because they had great pass rush. Um, it's just not gonna be as good. Is Xavier, where's Xavier Thomas? Is he good? Oh, he's, he's gotta stay healthy. He's, he's gotta, gotta stay, stay healthy. healthy. And he, he just doesn't, he just doesn't do that. I now the entire secondary is back. It's all back, which I like. I like the idea of that, but offensively, it's like 
while I love Garrett Riley and did I want Texas Santa to hire him? Yes, of course I did. I, yeah, I'm an idiot if I didn't think that. But uh, when I watch Cade Klubnik, I don't see a super confident five-star quarterback. I don't. I don't. He played in the ACC last year. Like, I, I get there were some big-name teams, but he struggled. In the same way DJ Uyunglele struggled, and we'll see if, like, those struggles were related, you know, to the offensive I Yeah, I think that's more what it is. I think that offense Could last be. year was not simple enough. I think Garrett Riley comes in with a plan. Simple things down, dumb things down. Uh, they're also going to stretch the ball vertically and in intermediate passes, play action pass, obviously, with Will Shipley and, and Mafa as the running backs. Um, but, again, I, I think Garrett Riley can be a great and scheme up all these guys open. But the wide receiver talent is not there. It's not it's there. Not. And, and, and here's, here's another thing that I'm really worried about, too. Their entire wide receiver core was not healthy this spring at all. So where are the reps that Kate Klumnick is getting with these players? Bo Collins yeah. was out. Adam Randall was out. Troy Stolano was out. I mean, that, that's that's a lot of people to be out if you're trying to build your chemistry in a new offense with a semi-new quarterback who's young. And it, it's just really tough for me. It's going to be very heavy Will Shipley. Right? If he goes down, I I get that. I know that Garrett Riley is good at his job. I know he is. But it's like at some point, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just I don't see the overhitting for sure. I mean, you play ND, right? You play FSU. I think they could lose both of those games. Yeah, but both those games are at home, too. That is nice. Both those games are at home. Dynamic. That is very nice. I think at Duke is kind of a trap game, week one. Um, you don't know what either teams are going to look like. I think Duke gets better. South Carolina, I, I don't know that they're going to win that game on the road. I don't know that they're going to win that game. Yeah, last year they had, them, they had them at home, right? They had South Carolina in Death Valley, and then they got to go to – um uh, and to south carolina this yeah, year and, and you go to miami which okay it's not a big deal right it, it's more so that you're not playing at clemson miami exactly if you're looking at a team that can match up well with clemson in terms of physicality up front it's going to be miami on the offensive line like they have they're loaded at the offensive line position this year and i could see them definitely putting a dent in that clemson defense i think jeremiah trotter is a fantastic player on defense um, and I might may may or may not mention him a little bit later in the show when we're talking about uh ACC awards, but it's just hard. It's just hard for me to see this team going over. I'm not I'm not on it. I'm not on the under, right? I just lean under. That's what I think about this team. Anything else, yeah. Dad? Yeah, I, I I don't hate the leaning under pick. I don't think you could ever right now you cannot bet on Davos Winnie to lose more than three games in our season, to not win ten games. They they've Fair. had their worst. They've had their worst teams recently. Yes, down the ACC has been putrid, right, the past couple of years, but they still won 10 games both those years. Um, I think they, maybe they won nine games in the regular season two Which years Which is ago. why but, I can't get myself to bet it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I yeah, leave it but I can't get myself to bet it. Exactly. And that's – now, yes, I, we talked about this a little bit earlier off air. Um, the ACC, in terms of talent gap from the bottom to the top, is definitely shrinking. Part of that is because you have teams like FSU, Miami – North Carolina State, Louisville, maybe North Carolina, maybe, maybe. Uh, um, that are closing the gap on Clemson, but also Clemson is closing the gap on themselves in terms of, you know, definitely th- this is not the Clemson of old, where they could roll out of bed and they they'd run the table in the ACC. That not not anymore. And guess what? They can't fix their problems in one off season because they they don't go to the transfer portal. David Aranda said it. David Aranda said admitted that that was his mistake last year. He was so confident in his guys. He, he was like, I'm not going to use the transfer portal. He's gone back on that. I think it's just, it's not that it's not important to recruit because that is the most important thing. But when everyone else has this other advantage over you, it's it's very clear that like they could have easily fixed some spots in the defensive line, I think, in the offseason for sure. Now, they still have a loaded defensive line. All right, they still do. But I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, anything else to say on yeah. Clemson? Well, I think that transfer portal is a great a great point. Um, in the ACC, the transfer portal is interesting because you do have a lot of schools that are really, really uh, academically prestigious, right? Boston College, Duke, Georgia Tech, Virginia, even North Carolina, but they don't really care about school for their athletes. You have – and so it is hard to use that transfer portal because – to transfer over classes and credits to become eligible to play for them is very, very hard, especially if you're coming from schools 
uh, that aren't quite as prestigious or aren't like, you know, the same, same level as these ACC powers. So they have to look to Ivy league schools. They have to look to other like league schools. And a lot of times you're not going to find elite talent there, but Clemson is not one of those schools. Clemson chooses themselves to restrict themselves, to not use it, to leverage the transfer portal. And I get Dabo Sweeney's an old still school guy. And yes, he's said it before, but he can still retract on it and nobody would bat an eye. Yes. He'd get grilled for a little bit, but, He'd win more games, and that's all it comes down to. I agree. I agree. 